pack into that Pokemon and with the championships between Eric Rios and John Paul Lopez Buiza. We have the two Amoongus staring each other down, but John Paul has Incineroar to Eric's Urshifu. This is a very like neutral lead for both players, not wanting to show the restricted Pokemon just yet keeping it safe in the back to make sure they can bring it in for a more advantageous position later on. We do see Eric hovering that Terra Grass. It is kind of something you need to do sometimes against an Amoongus if you are this Urshifu, just to make sure you're not going to get spored. Gives yourself a way to ensure you're you know, attacking the Incineroar, despite that possible Rage Powder coming through. But that does mean that the Terrestrialization is going to be off the board super early here for Eric. So does it actually come back to bite him if he wants to potentially save that for something else? But did you take a look at that? There's no Shadow Rider. <laughs> I honestly am not super surprised. Shadow Rider can be more difficult to use into a team that has both Incineroar and Terrapagos. Eric instead opting to bring his two restricteds that we're seeing on the field, Urshifu and Incineroar instead. Their, their power levels are about that high. We can, maybe, we can maybe count them together as one. Well. Maybe that's why we see such high usage for there both of go. those Pokemon is because they are that strong. <laughs> so we are going to see the terrestrialization committed to this Urshifu. Does leave it a little bit more vulnerable to something like a pollen puff from this Amoongus, but it's gonna get faked out anyway. Not getting a chance to move, and John Paul actually doesn't get a chance to see what this Urshifu has been able to lock into, but that's why we got the Terra exactly. to negate the score from this Amoongus. That's a really safe Terra, because even if the Urshifu does get faked out, there's no chance it could possibly get spored because it is now a grass type. It is immune to both Rage Powder and Spore. It now has the option to go for a strong attack into the Incineroar on John Paul's end, or possibly reposition itself with that U-turn. I love the Incineroar swap there too, because an Intimidated Incineroar on John Paul's side uh, will not be able to do much damage to it. And of course, it is holding the Safety Goggles item. Cannot be spored on the Switch as well. Well, there is going to be a switch regardless. This Incineroar are going to take a pivot out from Jean-Paul's side, and the Terrapagos finally making an appearance. This is what you called out. It Actually, is. this is why we don't see this Shadow Rider Calyrex, is because you know the Terrapagos has to be brought. But look at how well it's going to be able to take this Surging Strikes, this Terror Shell, going to make each of these individual hits not very effective. And that's the important part about Terror Shell. All three hits of this attack are not very effective because it did start this attack at full HP. It is a very, very strong ability. And thanks to Amoongus, it has the option to reset that ability with a possible Pollen Puff, but the Covert Cloak being knocked off is big. Now this Trapagos will be vulnerable to a possible fake out. And because it was taken under half, Terra Shell is actually not reactivated here. Yeah, that's huge. I mean, no Covert Cloak means that you're going to be able to just help deal with this Trapagos a little bit better. However, it's also maybe more important that you just get an additional amount of damage. Like you said, it means that that Terra Shell can't reactivate. And we also know that there actually isn't a whole lot that you're really worried about right now, but it leaves it so vulnerable to something like close combat. And the Terra Grass from Urshifu putting in a whole lot of work here. You cannot redirect that Surging Strikes. And now because Trapagos is not at full health, the Surging Strikes will be doing full power damage. And I think because of that Surging Strikes, you know, not being resisted because of Terra Shell anymore, I don't think there's any world where Jean Paul can have a Pollen Puff bring this Trapagos back up to full HP, unless the Urshifu swaps out here, which we are seeing for Eric. Yep, so there you go. Maybe giving a little bit of breathing room for Jean-Paul, but it also allows this Urshifu to reset its move. So if you can just keep spamming a bit of damage down to that Terrapagos, might feel really good about it. But also, you are vulnerable to a stellar Terra Star Storm. Would be super effective into that terrestrialized Urshifu as we see this Terrapagos take on a stellar form. Becoming stellar form means that Terra Star Storm is now a spread attack. It will hit both the Amoongus and the Incineroar for unresisted damage thanks to that stellar typing. That's a pretty good chunk of damage without having a Calm Mind boost off the bat. Yeah, and this is where the Terrapagos can really be effective for a team like this. You're trying to get as much chip damage down as possible while just helping stave off some of your own damage. But with that Pollen Puff, we are going to get this Trapagos back up to full. It is back up full. Terra Shell is now gone because it did terrestrialize, but it's always great to keep your restricted Pokemon uh, as healthy as you possibly can. That means if Roshifu comes back in, it probably is able to survive one close combat thanks to it being so, so bulky in this stellar form. Of course, the Amoongus on Eric's side, now kind of a problem for Jean-Paul because you do not have the option to redirect the Spore. You don't have anything like a Safety Goggles or a Substitute on this, uh, on this uh, Trapagos to you know, dodge a Spore. And we saw the damage coming through from that Terra Star Storm. One more is unlikely to knock out this Amoongus, which means Eric possibly has a free Spore here. That would be big. 
just put it to sleep. Get yeah. it out of the way. Make it a little bit easier to take out if it's not going to be a one-hit knockout on that close combat. But it's still around to be able to go for these Terra Star Storms as the fastest thing on the field. You saw how much it did on that first hit. It might even be one more hit to knock out this Amoongus. And this Incineroar is not long for this game either. Wanting to parting shot out to reposition the Pokemon on Eric's side of the field. We have not seen Eric's Amoongus act yet either. So a possible Spore, maybe, a, maybe even a Pollen Puff to cover some damage coming in here. Urshifu does retake the field. Really nice parting shot there because making the, the parting shot play as opposed to a possible uh, hard switch means Urshifu does not take damage. But a nice Pollen Puff there and a little bit of chip damage from Amoongus. Yeah, but it helps a little bit with that parting shot, right? right. It's not to be too much, and this Amoongus is able to land that spore into the Terrapagos. The, this is kind of the scary thing here, if you're Eric, is that if you do opt to go for a close combat into Terrapagos, you are lowering your special defense to the point that one more Pollen Puff from Jean Paul's Amoongus might be enough to take it out. It, it might be very close based on the, kind of that first bit of damage we saw there. But close combat, while it is the strongest damage option, does leave you more vulnerable. And again, you cannot redirect Pollen Puff from Jean Paul's Amoongus with your own because it is a grass type. There's been no terrestrializations there to mess up the type charts at all. So the Urshifu here is in a strong offensive position, but does kind of have to worry about taking too much damage from Paul and Puff. The hard thing too is that you also have to think about whether or not there's a switch in the back. The close combat's great into the Trapagos or even the Incineroar. We get a chance to see that at the field, but it could be that Fluttermane that's in the back. But it's not. It's just gonna be this Trapagos staying in and take a look at that. It wasn't even gonna be a one-hit knockout even without that Pollen Puff healing for that extra little bit. And that Trapagos gets a chance to take its first mandatory turn of sleep. But with those drops, Mm. It's actually going to be a side Pollen Puff, so we don't get a chance to see the outcome of those drops being affected into the Pollen Puff. Thanks to the side Pollen Puff, though, if Jean Paul does opt to swap his Incineroar in for that Amoongus, there's a pretty good chance the, tra the Trapagos on Jean Paul's end might be able to survive one more close combat. A lot of Trapagos are trained to make sure you can survive one close combat at full health in this stellar form. And thanks to Intimidate, that looks like it's right about the kind of the threshold there for those damage costs at a minus one attack stage for this Urshan. Unfortunately for Jean-Paul, though, we have the Iron Hands hit the field, and we are facing two fighting types as a traffic goes. Not the place you want to be going to swap out. Yeah, and so you do see this Incineroar brought back in. It's still going to take a super effective close combat itself, but here's where that minus one attack stage will come in handy. The fake out, too, into the Amoongus just helps to make sure that this is not going to be something like a spore into that Iron Hand slot. Ooh. It is a one-hit knockout with that critical hit. So. That might be a big critical hit there, Rosemary. I think a minus one Urshifu might not KO an Incineroar, especially if it's trained to be on the bulkier end. So possibly a rough break for Jean-Paul there, but at the same time, Maybe that's kind of what you wanted. You got the Incineroar on the field, you got the Intimidate. Both of these fighting types are at minus one. Now you have the possibility to send your Trapagos back in. Maybe get a Pollen Puff off, but instead opting for Chi Yu, I actually really like this as well. I believe it is the Choice Scarf Chi Yu. Should be able to outspeed this Choice Scarf Urshifu on Eric's side of the field. And because it did terrestrialize to a Grass type, it's actually really scared of a, a Choice Scarf Heat Wave here. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't think you can be comfortable about leaving this Urshifu in unless you feel like you're confident that maybe you do have this speed for some reason. Yeah. Um, but you never know. You you li quite literally never <laughs> know. Terrestrialization was committed onto the Terrapagos already too. Even though this Chiu doesn't actually have the, uh, the Ghost Terra as a fire one for a little bit of extra oomph, you know that it's still going to take these super effective hits. It does have the option too because of that Intimidate, thankfully. Rage Powder coming in though. No switches on the field. That means the Iron Hands attack will be redirected. And Urshifu outspeeds the Chi Yu, and it still KOs it in one hit. No way. Th this is just kind of lights out now. Now yeah. that Eric has found a spot to be able to keep this Urshifu on the field, you've gotten two big knockouts back to back with this Incineroar as well as the Chi Yu and this Terrapagos. That, it's going to be in a world yeah. of hurt right now. There's no possible swaps. This Urshifu will be able to freely target the Trap Ghost with a close combat. Possibly wants to swap out, reset that Intimidate drop, and make sure one more close combat can seal the deal. That is a really tough break for Jean-Paul. I think that's a play Jean-Paul only makes, thinking that his Chiyu outspeeds the Urshifu. And maybe that gives away that Eric's Urshifu is trained to be even faster than most people often train their Choice Scarf Urshifu because it is able to outspeed the naturally faster Chiyu. Some of the Chiyus opt to be a little bit stronger maybe pack some more special attack in there. But unfortunately for Jean-Paul, that is just not enough. 
Yeah, and that's going to be huge information going into game number two at the very least. But it's time for the Urshifu to take a little bit of a break. <laughs> Race at some of the drops that it's given to itself from the close combats. And okay. then Rapagos is going to get that first turn wake up. It's going to feel big. really nice to have that, be able to get some Terra Star Storm damage down onto both of these Pokemon. And this Iron Hands, though, takes that pretty comfortably with that Assault Vest in tow. It does. Unfortunately, without a Calm Mind boost, this Trapagos is not doing a whole lot of damage. That is a very, very bulky Iron Hands, taking just, it's just a quarter of its HP from not that Terra even. Star Storm. And I don't even think you have the luxury of going for a Pawn Puff anymore, because if you Pawn Puff and the, fer the, the Iron Hands, <laughs> the Feral Pulmus, goes straight for a Drain Punch into the Trapagos on John Paul's side. You, I don't think you're like doing enough healing to make up for that damage, and the Urshifu can just come in. And, and as long as Trapagos is just slightly under full HP, I think it just gets knocked out by one close combat. Yeah, I think this Amoongus too, you're actually okay with it just going down here. Yes. If it yeah. does, then you're able to get the Urshifu back in for free. It's going to be the fastest thing on the field, and just be able to clean up the game from there. So Eric, navigating that mid-game so well to make sure that he was able to secure the two knockouts back-to-back -back and just put this Terrapagos in a position where it was never really comfortable to go for those Calm Mind boosts. Even the Drain Punch here, too. Just really good damage down into this Terrapagos, and still, uh, this Palm Puff healing might not be enough, even if that is what we see. It's this difficult. This gets to come back in. It does, exactly like you said, Rosemary. The Amoongus getting knocked out there is really just best case for Eric. You get the free safe swap back into your own Urshifu. And even if the, the uh, Traffic Ghost is able to survive one close combat from here, I think it should be knocked out. Let's say it does survive. The Amoongus can either Rage Potter the, the Drain Punch or Spore the Iron Hands. And either way, there's not a whole lot of time left for Jean Paul to get some damage out with this Trapagos. Oh, but this is smart. I mean, you just get mm. the U turn into the Amoongus to help trip it away just a little bit. You keep your Urshifu for later, and you're able to cycle back in this Incineroar. If for some reason it survives, then you're also able to get like a fake out into this Trapagos to stop it from moving now that that Covert Cloak is gone. And. Regardless, you get a chance to get this Urshifu bag in for free. Yeah, very heads up play there. Making sure Amoongus is off the field means that, you know, let's let's say your close combat barely doesn't KO and then a big Pollen Puff comes through. That's kind of the one way you still have to lose this game if you're error. But making sure Amoongus is gone, now any damage into this Trapagos will stick. And because you have the Urshifu, because you have the very, very bulky Iron Hands, still taking very little damage from these Terra Star Storms, this is all but sealed up in Eric's favor. Yeah, it could be just a quick, a quick Drain Punch and a quick Fake Out. You could also, do, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't swap in your issue for him, maybe just in case. Uh, you, you can pick it you out, could, pick yeah, out yeah, switch, yeah, that's yeah, safe. Okay. There's no, no, no more Covert Cloak. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly, yeah. Being able to knock off that Covert Cloak is huge. Yes. Even though it didn't necessarily. I do think Fluttermane is tempting here. You know, it's, it's two fighting types against the Fluttermane. That's kind of its place to be. You don't have to worry about taking a straight Astral Barrage if Eric is not going to bring the Calyrex Shadow Rider again. Uh, but not going to see it just yet, though. We have the Trapagos Amoongus into the Iron Hands Amoongus. And kind of new, very similar leads to last time. Again, the Covert Cloak is still intact, so Trapagos cannot be flinched by a Fake Out. The Fake Out could possibly break Terra Shell. Uh, you can also maybe go for something like a Drain Punch for some damage. Iron Hands is not a Grass-type Trastalization, is Water instead. So the Amoongus here on John Paul's side able to redirect a possible Drain Punch. But of course, you cannot redirect the Amoongus on Eric's side. Another Spore here into Trapagos could be coming through. Yeah, but you could also just on Jean-Paul's side actually spore the, uh, the Iron Hands or anything that's going to switch into that slot. And the Iron Hands is going to leave the field. So instead of our coming in, these Intimidate Drops not going to matter onto either the Amoongus or the Terrapagos. But it's not bad to have another Fake Out option in or even just have the opportunity to get the knockoff. I like this switch from both trainers. You know, switching your safety goggles and center roar into an Amoongus ensures that you know no spores can come through here. Really smart, especially on Eric's end. That means that both of his Pokemon are immune to spores. So if Jean Paul did try to go for a spore this turn, it would not have worked. And of course, for Jean Paul, you switch in your Incineroar, cannot be spored. You have the option to fake out the Amoongus on this turn. But Eric, as one step ahead, gets his own Incineroar on the field. And now we're going to have to worry about possible Incineroar speed interactions. Uh, and you know, this Trapagos is now no longer safe from something like a knockoff. But something that I think Jean-Paul is really hoping for with this Incineroar is it does have Will-O-Wisp. Mm -hmm. So if Eric was comfortable being able to bring the Urshifu as the main source of damage in that game number one, then Incineroar would love to be positioned in a way that it would be able to not get knocked out to <laughs> right. a close combat, but also be able to land something like a Will-O-Wisp into that Pokemon. But 
with what we have on the field, this is the perfect opportunity for Jean-Paul to weave in a calm mind. One boost going onto that Terrapagos is going to raise its special attack as well as its special defense. Special attack and special defense are boosted, and now Ericsson's Senroar is at minus two attack. Thanks to these switch interactions on the prior turn, it did get intimidated by Jean Paul's. And Alamungus comes back onto the field. Parting shot comes through here, lowers the Trapagos' special attack back down to neutral. And the attack, we don't really care about that part. It's a special attacker. A uh, special defense boost will stick though, but Eric's Amungus will have the chance to attack freely here. And if it's a spore into that Trapagos, that could be rough for Jean Paul. It really could, but it is. So this Trapagos does get a chance to build up some of that impact with later if it's able to actually survive. The good news is that this Terrapagos hasn't terrestrialized yet. So Terra Shell is still active with it being at full HP and there isn't a great way for Eric to break it just yet outside of just going for a close combat twice. Right. Because Amoongus is so slow. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing too here is that uh, it, it's tough for this Terrapagos to make ground. Of course, it does have to take its one mandatory turn of sleep, but it is back down to neutral special attack thanks to that parting shot. And we are confirmed that Eric did not bring the Calibrex Shadow Rider again. It is the double fighting type. And because the, the Terrapagos is a neutral special attack, this Iron Hands will be taking the tax so, so well. And we, we saw it do less than a quarter while with that Terra Star Storm. And between that and Pollen Puff, you might not even be able to knock it out before the PP runs out. Well, here's a great way to get around the fact that this Urshifu has the opportunity to break the Terra Shell before going for its big close combat to finish off this Terrapagos. Just go for the U-turn. Yeah. Breaks the Terra Shell. It allows this Urshifu to pivot back out when it is in danger at the moment of getting put to sleep. So Incineroar gets a chance to cycle back in, has the safety goggles now to block that if it is coming in that direction and you don't have to commit your terrestrialization just yet, which is very important to think about when you know that this Terrapagos is sitting on the field and could tear at any moment. I would really like that call out of not terrestrializing the Urshifu. I think it's really smart to make sure that you still have that option available to you later on. But because they're going for U-turn, even if it gets redirected, not a big deal. Like, the options there are you U-turn the Trapagos as a Pawn Puff resets Terra Shell anyway, or the Moongus Rage Powders and you U-turn that. So Terra Shell is still intact at the end of the turn regardless. So a nice hold of that Trastalization, and of course a very safe swap into this Incineroar. No spores can possibly come through here. Uh, Chiyu now going to be revealed as the fourth and final for Jean-Paul in this game number two. So the same four as we saw in that first game. This Ooh, time around, turn wake. this is big because, yeah, not only do you get the first Ooh. turn wake up, you get the earth power into the Incineroar and just increase special attack because of this Beads of Ruin dropping the special defense of this Incineroar. But the knockoff comes through. It's going to drop that Covert Cloak so this Drapagos can get faked out uh. and future turns and the Spore. I so big earth power, but it's going to go back to sleep. And, like, why not Spore there, right? Among Us isn't really doing anything else productive on that turn. So just in case the Drapagos wake up, you cover it with that spore. It is now guaranteed to be asleep for the following turn. And hopefully for Eric, you're hoping for not another other consecutive first turn wake from this Trapagos. That Earth Power did do a good chunk of damage to the Incineroar, thanks to that Beads of Ruin, like you called out Rosemary. But I just, I'd have to wonder if that's enough. It's a Choice Scarf Chiyu, doesn't have a boosting item of any sort, uh, and it is not going to be able to hit this Incineroar for anything other than not very effective damage. Let's well, gonna get out of here too. Yeah. So yeah, like you said, maybe not necessarily staring down the targets that they would like to. And so Amoongus going to come back in and take its place. At the very least, Amoongus helps to put a little bit of pressure down too, but another parting shot means that Starfa goes to neutral anymore. It's gonna be minus one. It is minus one, exactly the place you do not want to be against a team as bulky as Eric's. You already struggle to do meaningful damage with this Trapagos, and at minus one special attack, on a turn where you have to stay asleep, you're getting put pretty far behind here. You're seeing this full health Amoongus, full health Urshifu. Incineroar took a good chunk, but the Iron Hands in the back still very healthy as well. And if you're Jean-Paul, your options are kind of getting limited here. So, reset it. Take yep. the Trapagos off the field. It's going to get a chance to go work out those turns of sleep <laughs> a little bit later. But you have to keep it safe so it can do some damage later on in this game. But the U-turn coming out as well into this uh, Incineroar. Urshifu, ugh, Eric's just been calling this so nicely to know that this Urshifu has to maintain its HP just to be able to deal with this Trapagos later if he expected Jean-Paul to switch it out. And of course now knowing that the Chiyu is, on, is uh, something, a Pokemon that Jean-Paul brought to this game, 
keeping that Urshifu, which we know outspeeds Chiyu, can also be very important to make sure Chiyu doesn't get something like a big heat wave off, something like a big overheat off into the Zamungus on Eric's side. And another Pollen Puff Ooh. coming through in here means that now Eric's team is almost fully healthy. We're so many turns into this game, and you saw just there, this Incineroar is, like what, like 30 HP down, but the rest of Eric's Pokemon are at full health. This is such a difficult battle for Jean Paul right now. There's been very little damage across the board and this yeah. entire game. It's been all about this pivot game. Honestly, something that we haven't gotten a chance to see too much in the early days of Regulation G, because it's much harder to oh. operate with things like Parting Shot or U-Turn when you have things like Clear Amulet or even just a lot of priority blocking moves too. That was a nice read that Jean Paul had to make there. He did try to go for a Spore into that Incineroar slot, maybe trying to call a Parting Shot or a Swap from that Incineroar. Unfortunately, the other slot is what swapped. And if Urshifu came in there and got spored, that could have been a big swing momentum in John Paul's favor. But unfortunately, Eric's still in the driver's seat here, and we're going to see the Urshifu terrestrialize once again. Smart, smart call. This Terra Grass worked out so well for this Urshifu in the last game, just being able to mitigate this spore potential as well as the rage powder potential, but John Paul is going to commit the terrestrialization in this game too to not the Terrapagos. It's the Incineroar getting the ghost type. Now it's going to be able to take all of these close combats because you just can't hit it. You can't. I, I think a smart trustization on both ends there. Surging Strikes coming into Incineroar here is no longer super effective, so it should be able to take this attack, possibly fire off a big Will-O-Wisp into that Urshifu, which could be a really big break for Jean Paul here, mitigating that damage with a burn. It does come through and it does connect. Yeah, it is going to connect here, so that means that, these, that all of these attacks from the Urshifu are going to hurt just a little bit less. <laughs> Uh, but the knockoff oh, so into good. the Incineroar is such a great call to be able to cover for the terrestrialization because you ensure that just the double up is going to be able to get this Incineroar out of there. Unfortunately, the burn went through. And yes. That was the more important <laughs> thing for Jean Paul to deal with. That's a, I think that's such a really smart turn for Eric, too. Going for surging strikes and knockoff into that slot, looking at the things that that could possibly hit. It's the Incineroar, which gets knocked out by surging strikes, or if it terrestrializes, gets knocked out by surging strikes and knockoff. Chiyu certainly cannot switch into a Surging Strikes. And Trapagos maybe survives that turn, but comes out very, very poorly. You know, it's such low health that one more Surging Strikes is easily able to KO it. And of course, the Trasalization from Urshifu means that neither Pokemon on Eric's side of the field could be redirected or put to sleep by the Amoongus on John Paul's end. And now Eric has taken the first KO of the game so far on turn 25 or whatever we're on right now. Uh, and it's, it's so much damage that John Paul just can't really make up. And he did this last time in game number one where he finally found that opening to take the first KO yeah. and put the pin down, as right. he said. Like, there's really not a whole lot that Jean-Paul can do in this situation to be able to, I think, come back from this. I mean, what's this poor Amoongus doing? <laughs> like, like there's there's two grass types and a safety goggles on Eric's side of the field, and your knockoff is gone. Like, you can't go to the safety goggles anymore, either. <laughs> the good news is this Terrapagos is actually taking these surging strikes pretty well. You're going to need at least two more, if not three, to connect onto this Terrapagos. But it is going to have to take its first turn of sleep here because it got switched out. So you're buying yourself a little bit of time, but all the while, this Terrapagos has to take yet another parting shot, something you were trying to shed by removing this Terrapagos from the field. It does take a parting shot. If this is a Pollen Puff from Jean Paul, though, it does get back up to full health. You know, the Terra Shell remains intact, but like, like then what, right? Like you, you have to get one, maybe two Calm Minds to be actually doing meaningful damage here. And I guess, of course, the, the Urshifu on Eric's side has terrestrialized. And because of how Terra Star Storm works, it will be super effective. Well, it can't even terrestrialize Terrapagos anymore. So there's no, there's no chance for super effective damage from that Terrapagos, from the, the st t stellar Terra, Terra Star Storm. That's, that's a tongue twister there for you. <laughs> uh, and so now you just have to rely on the single target, normal type Terra Star Storm damage, which will not be doing any super effective damage. It won't be able to you know, pick up any big KOs. Again, it's, it's a minus one special attack. What's it going to do? And that's where potentially Timer actually starts True. to come into play because this has been many, many, many turns in yeah. this game number two and it has gone on for quite some time. Because there is a Pokemon advantage for Eric, it would mean at the end of that timer, you would be able to win. So if the Terrapagos isn't able to do enough damage to try to even the score, we do get into that timer territory. But at the very least, we're going to try our best 
This Amoongus is going to get a little bit of damage down, at least onto the Incineroar, but the fact that both of these Amoongus are alive, you're always threatening Pollen Puff on the other side. You're threatening Pollen Puff, and I think you can also easily just keep sporing that Tropicos slot. We've, we've seen Eric do that already, where you target a sleeping Tropicos with a spore. What that does is you cover for it waking up, or in this case, you can also cover for it possibly swapping out into Chiyu. And if Chiyu gets put to sleep, I think that's kind of an instant game over in this case. But that is important to note that the Chiyu is still healthy. It is, yeah. And it is going to be able to do some meaningful Wakes damage. Up. And with the Beads of Ruin active, I was going to say that there could be a big <laughs> attack here, but I'm getting baited, and the Tropicos <laughs> is just going to be oh. able to go for a Protect. Would have been nice if the Incineroar had targeted down that slot for Jean-Paul just to keep this Incineroar in here. But no, the Chiyu is going to take that instead and have its special attack dropped. That's that's just such a rough spot to be in if you're Jean-Paul. Your Chiyu comes in, you finally get the chance to bring it onto the field, possibly threatens a big damage, and of course the bird on Ushifu. Big deal for this Chiyu as well, because one close combat or surging strikes, probably not able to knock it out. But at the same time, you get it in without getting sport, it is at minus one special attack. You are still threatening, you know, pretty, pretty big damage with either a Heat Wave or Overheat. The Beads of Ruin goes really hard here, especially with Urshifu being a grass type, but... Yeah, but it's it's not faster. It's not, It's no. just not faster. And you've already committed the Terra onto the Incineroar that got knocked out. So you can't even actually, like, try to Terra away from this super effective close combat. Because you just become a fire type only. Right. <laughs> so John Paul in another position where you got to get the Chi Yu off the field. And we're back into this pivot game close combat. Now going to be taken by this Amoongus, but at the very least, you're, you're helping a little bit. Like, Jean-Paul, still not out of it. Really able to claw his way back in here, but with this Terra Star Storm coming out onto the Urgy oh. wow, that Beads of Ruin would have helped. It would. It, it still will get knocked out by this burn, thankfully, so Jean-Paul will be able to even the Pokemon count, and that makes a, a timer endgame much more kind of tenuous for both players, especially because they do both have their Amoongus still left. Very much Pollen Puff is on the field, or is, is in play for either player. And of course, Urshifu being knocked out means that even though it was burned, still a big damage threat, and one of those all-important fighting types on Eric's side of the field is now gone. Especially considering the thing that's faster than Chiyu also has been knocked out. Yeah, so this Chiyu is in a much better position, and Jean-Paul has really navigated this uh, rotating door just beautifully. <laughs> That's true. It's been such an interesting game so far. There's been very little damage going on until all of a sudden on one turn, one thing just gets knocked out immediately, <laughs> which is it's a really kind of position game that we're seeing these two very experienced players play. And it's just really fun to see how they're trying to manage their resources until it's the perfect time to get a big attack off. Even, yeah. though, even though Tropicos went to sleep there, it got that huge Terra Star Storm, and that was what John Paul needed at the time. But you're still kind of dealing with the fact that, like, this Incineroar can go for the knockoff because it was still holding an item that Amoongus is going to take just a little bit more damage from that knockoff and just a spore game. Yeah. <laughs> Wants to try to spore the Incineroar, can't do that, <laughs> or, like, Amoongus can't get affected by the spore either. And you can't go for Pollen Puff into the Tropicos because it is at full HP. You're, you're like, really losing nothing by sporing this Tropicos yeah. is the thing. Like, if it wakes up, you get the chance to put it back to sleep immediately. If it switches out, you get the chance to put the Chiyu to sleep immediately. And either way, your Amoongus is not doing much damage with Pollen Puff at all. You have the option to maybe heal your Incineroar, but at this point, the minus one Tropicos and the, the opposing Amoongus are not threatening big damage. And Flare Blitz coming through here, actually going to be enough to KO Amoongus. Eric retakes the Pokemon lead. That's huge. It is. Because we've seen those Your Time timers. They're starting to tick down. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe about two minutes left here for Eric's and another Spore just to try to keep this Terrapagos in check. Great way to deal with that that pesky yeah. Moongus on the other side. And it might sound weird to say too, but I think a lot of players maybe are used to Incineroar not running Flare Blitz anymore. A lot of players opting yes, to run a support a move point. like Will-O-Wisp or Taunt in that slot instead. And uh, with the Flare Blitz coming through, we're able to KO that Amoongus. We have a technical difficulty. As we saw. Uh, as we see the Amoongus and the Incineroar lead for Jean-Paul, and it's going to be the Amoongus and Incineroar lead for Eric. I'm seeing double. I am too, Rosemary. It is another mirror lead here, and we're seeing the Incineroar on Jean-Paul's side. Intimidate, activate first. Might tell you a little bit about how these Incineroar are trained. I believe at least once earlier on in the set, we saw Jean-Paul's act first as well. So knowing that, you know, that's happened, there's probably a pretty good chance that Jean-Paul's is trained to be a little bit faster than Eric's, but of course we can't fully rule that out just yet. 
So how are you going to deal with the situation? Because these Pokemon aren't necessarily packing a whole lot of punch unless you're right. looking at Eric's Incineroar having Flare Blitz. I think the advantage is Eric's here because of that Flare Blitz. You actually have something to threaten the Amoongus on Jean-Paul's side of the field, whereas Jean-Paul only has Knock Off and Pollen Puff as offensive options here. And Knock Off is always very useful. Like, getting into something's item is nice. Uh, another play you can make is actually like a Knock Off plus four into an Incineroar slot to get rid of the safety goggles and put it to sleep. Not gonna see that here for Eric, though. No, it's just gonna be a pivot out of this Amoongus, but you do have the Urshifu taking its place. So what did this Amoongus end up going for? It's gonna be the Spore, but it's gonna be into the Incineroar slot. I think what Jean-Paul was going for was exactly that, the knockoff plus Spore combination into Eric's Incineroar. Eric making a very smart play there, knowing that that's something Jean-Paul can do. You know, his, his Jean-Paul's Incineroar most likely faster, has the option to attack first, but going for that fake out is a risky play. If, if Jean-Paul's Incineroar opted to fake out Eric's, Nothing happens there, but of course, blocking the spore with the safety goggles, getting this Urshifu in, which is a really big threat, especially with that Terra Grass, has the option to force some offensive positions here on Eric's favor. But this is a tough call for Jean-Paul to have to make. You see this Incineroar have a big threat across its way with that Urshifu, but you're also going to be switching in something else that if it's going to be a fighting type attack heading that Terrapagosis direction, that's going to have to take it instead. It's just the U-turn, though, into that slot. Very nice coverage option to have, especially if it does get redirected away by this Amoongus with a Rage Powder. And it makes sure that this Urshifu doesn't have to commit that Terra right away if we see, do see Jean-Paul try to go for a Spore into that slot. So two more Pokemon still on the field here for Eric as he just pivots around their spots on the field. I really love how aggressively Eric is using U-turn. It's such a very powerful tool that you often don't really think of when you're looking at an Urshifu. You know, it's, it's known for being very strong, is known for bypassing Protect with Unseen Fist, getting those critical hits with Surging Strikes, but U-Turn is such a strong option that allows you to pivot on a team like Eric's, where there's very bulky Pokemon like this, like this Incineroar, like the Amoongus, two things that can resist you know, those spores and not get put to sleep. It puts you in such a strong spot because now you were able to break the Terra Shell on Trapagos while switching the Urshifu out, getting your Incineroar back in, and kind of controlling the flow of the game much more see where Eric is going to take this now. Because that Urshifu, yeah, like it gets the U-turn. It gets to preserve its HP for a little bit later. But this Terrapagos just goes for the Earth Power. And then Incineroar takes like a champ, but it's still going to take a meaningful amount of damage. As the knockoff in return gets rid of that Mental Herb, but it's mm. also going to be able to do a good amount of damage. With the safety goggles still coming into play. <laughs> and uh, Spores across the board. That's, spores, that's so spores, funny. spores. There, we've seen so many spores, not not even like on the Switch, like intentionally target either sleeping or immune <laughs> targets in this game. But it, like none of them have been bad plays either, right? It's just right? cover. It, yeah. it's, it's, it's cover because you, you get the knockoff and the spore into that slot. Either a Mookus takes some trip damage or something <laughs> switching in gets put to sleep. Travagos gets some big damage off there. That's like actually a, the first time maybe in this whole set that Jean Paul's been ahead in the damage department. Uh, but Terra Starstorm coming through, it's gonna be a big chunk of damage into Iron Hands. But it's not the Earth Power. So no. it does feel a little bit better. And with that Assault Fest, it is gonna take the Terra Starstorm uh, pretty well, pretty well. But as we see that Pollen Puff come through to bring that Terra Shell, back to active, it's gonna be the Spore that finally lands into a target and does put that Terrapa goes to sleep. Interesting enough, Terra Starstorm actually does more to a single target before terrestrialization, just because of the way that sprint damage and the same type attack bonus uh, is, is calculated when terrestrialization occurs. So we did see a, you know, about a third of the Iron Hands HP getting taken by that Star Terra Starstorm. Unfortunately, this is a very free pollen buff. If you're Eric, you can heal that Iron Hands up very easily, even switch out the Iron Hands into Incineroar for a Pollen Puff to get that Incineroar back up to near full HP. And because this Trapagos has to stay asleep, and because this Incineroar has the safety goggles, there is no chance for uh, any damage or spores coming through here. Absolutely. It's a super safe play. And something really important is to consider how HP is your resource yeah. in longer games like this. So those Pollen Puffs are going to end up becoming very, very valuable. And this Incineroar, it's so healthy now. Yeah, it is healthy, and it's really not threatened by much from either of these two Pokemon on John Paul's side of the field. The Covert Cloak's still intact on Trapagos, I believe it has not been knocked off yet, so you can't fake it out. 
But you can opt to go for a knockoff, maybe break the Terra Shell once again, open up fake outs for later on in the game. There's parting shots, there's, you know, trying to get some, like a Flutter Blades into a Moongus would actually probably KO it from here if, if Jean Paul is caught sleeping uh, and doesn't allow the Incineroar on Eric's side of the field to possibly get intimidated. Uh, maybe you have to switch in your own Incineroar in that slot to resist the Flutter Blitz. I, I think that Eric is still in a very strong position here because he just has so many more resources than Jean Paul at his disposal on this turn. Well, the Incineroar now coming in for the Amoongus. It's going to just continue to be this lazy Susan of Pokemon <laughs> hitting the field. They're all changing places, too. That's True. why I feel like it yeah, makes a lot of sense around. here. Yeah, see? Yeah. See, exactly. But then the knockoff now into the Terra Shell. At least it's going to break that. It also gets rid of the Covert Cloak, I think. Yeah. It's game number three. Sure, yeah, yeah, I was like, I know it's happened already twice, but just, just making sure. And the score to cover in case that Terrapagos did in fact wake up. Yeah, so Covert Cloak no longer in the picture. will be able to fake out this Terrapagos later on in the game if that is something Eric deems necessary. But of course, the Terrapagos now is in prime position to get parting shotted and or spored and or both at the same time, regardless of whether or not it wakes up. It's just kind of a position where because John Paul's Incineroar again is not running Flare Blitz, the Amoongus on Eric's side is really not being threatened at all. But take a look at this. Eric wants to try to go for a similar play that Jean-Paul was not able to do back. We see the knockoff into the Incineroar as well as the Spore to try to select into that. But, ooh, it's just going to be a parting shot. So something is going to come back in to have <laughs> to take that double up. And it might not feel super good. Let's see what Jean-Paul decides to bring back out onto the field. Because it could be that Terrapagos, which is already asleep. Yep. So that's a great call for Jean-Paul. Yeah, kind of a dead turn for Eric there because the knockoff here does some actually pretty good damage with that critical hit. But of course, the spore into the sleeping Terrapagos does nothing as that Lazy Susan keeps rotating, switching those Pokemon around. And again, it's kind of just the same position where you, know, you have the sleeping Tropicos and the Amoongus. What exactly can either player accomplish right now? <laughs> but this is kind of the position that Jean-Paul wants. You have the Amoongus right. next to the Tropicos, so you can go for the Pollen Puff True. and re-enable this Terra Shell yeah. with knowing that there isn't a whole lot of actual damage on this side. Yeah, yes, you can go for the Flare Blitz into the Tropicos, but you're still trying to figure out a way to actually get your big damage dealers on Eric's side into the mix. And at the one thing that a couple turns ago that we saw is the parting shot from Jean Paul's Incineroar. Because of that speed interaction, I think it's pretty safe to assume now that the Incineroar on Jean Paul's side is faster. And even though Eric was going for that play, like you mentioned, of the knockoff score to go to the safety goggles, Jean Paul can always parting shot out. And that's something yep. that he knows now. You can not get caught by that play if you're just going for parting shots. But look at that. I mean, just another score to cover. Yeah. But this Terrapagos has its Terra Shell intact <laughs> once again. And it's going to be like this for a couple more turns while Eric and Jean-Paul both try to figure out a way to actually get what they want in front of the target. But with this Terrapagos finally waking up, it gets a chance to get some damage off onto the Sabungus. Oh. It's half. That's, that's a really good amount of damage. That's actually a surprising amount of damage. I don't. There's no calm mind there. That is a neutral Terra Star Storm doing just over half to Amoongus. Really big turn there for Jean Paul, just because you're finally getting some damage onto the field. We have not seen Jean Paul's fourth Pokemon yet either. Of course, we know Eric's four, but not the fourth for Jean Paul. I think probably the Chiu again, just based on what sense. we've seen. Yeah. Big spoiler there, though. The parting shot means that Incineroar swaps out. Gets the traffic goes down to minus one special attack, but at what cost? Your Urshifu comes in here and gets put to sleep at the same time as this traffic goes. And now this might come down to which wakes up first. Yeah. It's been a lot of turn one wake-ups here for this Terrapagos. Yeah, true. <laughs> but it did just take a long, long nap. So we'll see if it's still sleepy heading into these next couple of turns. At the very least, yeah, okay. Eric's Eric did go to sleep, but it's not Terra Grass. So like it's not able to take a super effective Terra Star Storm, and right. also those Pollen Puffs aren't going to be super effective either, which could come into play. The nice thing though is Eric gets a chance to actually get some Regenerator Healing back onto the Samungus that did take a lot of damage, and you get this Incineroar back in, which can threaten a fake out into the Terrapagos without that Covert Cloak. So exactly. it helps to actually break the Terra Shell once again, and you get a chance to maybe get that turn one wake up and go for a double up into the Trapagos. Exactly, I was gonna say the exact same thing, Rosemary. A 
fake out plus Sorry, close combat here. No, no, no. You, should, you said what you stood there. Uh, that's a great option there if you're Eric. Uh, it's it's kind of a big play to make. Like you're, you kind of have to trash if you want to go for that play. And of course, there's no guarantee. But if it's a one in three chance to wake up on this first turn, you also have to rely on the traffic ghost not waking up on Jean Paul's side, possibly trying to protect in front of a possible fake out. Chiyu does hit the field though for Jean Paul, confirming that is his fourth Pokemon. And we are seeing a trashalization here. But I believe that Jean Paul's traffic ghost. It is. Because we did see a pivot from the other slot, it can only be this Terrapagos that gets that stellar Terra. And so Jean-Paul really hoping that it's going to be able to wake up this turn. Azera goes for the fake out, though. So even if it does wake up, Urshifu. it's not going to be able to actually get the attack off. Oh. But Urshifu just goes for the U-turn. So Jean-Paul can maybe breathe a sigh of relief, yes. <laughs> knowing that it wasn't actually going to be a close combat to finish off this Terrapagos. Now that Urshifu has actually left the field, this Chiyu will be the fastest thing on the field. Iron Hand's a great swap here because you do have the option to go for a fake out into that Chiyu. Prevent possibly a big overheat, maybe a, a, you know, a nice snarl. But Incineroar, sorry, Terrapagos does actually stay asleep, so no big damage from a Terra Star Storm just yet. No, but it's still going to be vulnerable to a Drain Punch. It's still also going to be vulnerable to this Urshifu in the back, and that's big for Eric, because even though you were able to get the U-turn, yeah, you're pivoting out, but it's important to know that your Urshifu is actually awake. It is. Yeah, that's really, really nice. That means when the Urshifu comes back in, again, you have not terrestrialized any of your Pokemon yet. The Terra Grass on Urshifu might be even more tempting now that the terrestrialization has hit the field for Jean Paul. This Chiyu cannot terrestrialize away from a possible close combat weakness. Does get flinched by a fake out that does a good chunk of damage as well. Unable to move and Trafico stays asleep for one more turn. Ooh, that's a big deal because it's going to be, have to take this parting shot. And it's taken a couple at this point in the game. As the Incineroar now leaves the field, this Urshifu also not worse for wear because it hasn't terrestrialized just yet. Okay, it was vulnerable to the Spore, but it's not going to be nearly as vulnerable to this Chiyu. This is a scary turn for Jean Paul. I think the Amoongus kind of has to swap in here, but if you're going to leave either of these two Pokemon on the field, one of them might be able to take a close combat. And of course, if you switch both out, Incineroar has to come in as well, which really doesn't want to take a close combat itself. Amoongus still perfectly healthy though, and just gonna be a full side swap for Jean-Paul as the Terrapagos and the Chiyu leave. So back to square one, as Jean-Paul did lead this Amoongus and the Incineroar at the start of the game. But this Intimidate, so important onto both of these physical attackers oh. on Eric's side. But it is going to be the Surging Strikes into the Amoongus. Could you imagine if it was the Incineroar that it hit? That's a really big break for Jean-Paul. Correctly calling those swaps and Surging Strikes into Amoongus is kind of the best case scenario there. There's no U-turn to reposition. This, this Urshifu is now locked into Surging Strikes and cannot damage this Amoongus, but the Drain Punch covers that well. Another good chunk of damage into that Incineroar, which again cannot terrestrialize. And now you have the option to go straight for that grass type terrestrialization on your Urshifu, avoid the Amoongus's Rage Powder, and knock out certainly the Incineroar and the Chi with the Surging Strikes. Also, do some really good damage to this Terrapagos in the back, which no longer has access to Terra Shell. That would be very, very tough for the Strapagos to have to switch in. Honestly, anything in the back here for Jean Paul doesn't really want to switch in to take any attack from this Urshifu or this Iron Hand. Yeah. So Eric put himself in a phenomenal position. Even though both of these Pokemon are intimidated, you just have great coverage for anything that Sean Paul is going to have. The Intimidate doesn't even affect the Urshifu right now as it is locked into that Surging Strikes. Critical Hits will ignore the Intimidate and act as if it is at neutral attack, even when it is at minus one thanks to Intimidate. The Urshifu is going to terrestrialize for Eric now. It is a Grass type. It will not be affected by Spore or Rage Potter for the remainder of this game. And this could be a really big turn for Eric to start getting some big offense out with this Urshifu. This game has taken a while, so any KOs towards the end of this timer are going to be very, very valuable. But the fake out into the Urshifu means it is not able to actually get an attack off this turn. But the Amoongus going for Spore into the Incineroar means it's going to be a pretty boot turn here for Jean-Paul as well. Moot turn for Jean-Paul, and now he's kind of just got to pick what he want to take the Surging Strikes. Incineroar and Chiyu will be knocked out, and Terrapagos really doesn't want to take it either, especially because you can very easily just fake out the Amoongus on John Paul's side of the field. You prevent something like a, a swap to Terrapagos to eat one Surging Strikes and a Pollen Puff to keep it healthy. So now in this case, you just kind of have to pick something to get knocked out if you are Jean Paul by this Urshifu, which is a very, really smart Surging Strikes lock. I mean, it looked like a, kind of a, a suboptimal turn when it, it did Surging Strikes and Amoongus, but in this position, nothing else wants to take it and you can no longer redirect it. Well, Mungus is just going to protect. Jean Paul hoping that Amoongus was the target for the very least of Flare Blitz. But 
The fake out does go into that slot instead. So nice protect there just to preserve a little bit more HP as the surging strikes. Only takes one and it's done. This Incineroar down for the count in this game. And John Paul down to three, Pokemon to four for Eric. And Pokemon advantage for Eric here, but I think the one thing you do have to worry about if you are Eric is your Urshifu has now been terrestrialized. It is weak to Terra Star Storm. Travico's probably able to survive one Surging Strikes, and if it does wake up, you will be easily knocked out by that super effective spread Terra Star Storm. Especially now that you have this Urshifu, which again is faster than Shiyu, is a really big deal for Eric to keep safe. Swapping it out makes a ton of sense. Absolutely. You gotta keep that Urshifu safe because it's still very important to get those final knockouts on to this Terrapagos or up. this Chiyu. But the Terrapagos, it does finally wake up. So this Terra Star Storm with this spread damage, it's going to be really helpful to try to whittle away at this Incineroar and this Iron Hands. But it's just a little bit, chip by chip, maybe this Terrapagos is able to help soften up these targets for this Chiyu. I really like that parting shot as well. You, you possibly risk like a spore going into this Iron Hands if Jean Paul is again aggressively targeting you know, these immune targets with those spores. But you do get your Mungus in here, and now that the Tropicos is at minus one special attack, you don't really want to stay on the field. And Spore even goes into the Amoongus slot. The parting wow. shot is called. Unfortunately, though, Eric switches in the Amoongus instead. And now this is a, a pretty free spore into that Tropicos slot. And you obviously you cannot redirect the Amoongus with Rage Powder on Jean Paul's Amon Amoongus. And of course, the Chiyu and the Trapagos are not immune to Spore as he might wish they are. So something's going to put to sleep here, I think, Rosemary. I think so, but not before this Trapagos is going to be able to get off a big Earth Power into this Iron Hands. I say that because it was still more damage, I think, than we saw from the Terra Star <laughs> Storm. But this Drain Punch can help to get a little bit more HP recovery for this Iron Hands. It's a long game, it's a marathon, and this Palm Pump is going to make it even harder as this Terrapagos gets put back up to full. But the Spore, Ugh. this poor Terrapagos <laughs> hasn't been able to do very much in this game. I think anyone in chat, can we like count how many turns Travagus has been awake and how many it's been asleep to start the turn? Yeah. I, I feel like it's been asleep more than it's actually gotten to act in this whole game. Uh, even though this is uh, still a 3-4 advantage for Eric, we saw the Pollen Puff come through. Really important tool to keep Travagus healthy. I struggle to see kind of how Jean-Paul wins this game anyway, especially considering we just saw a three-minute timer warning flashed. It means in three minutes, the game will naturally end. And if Eric maintains this Pokemon lead, he will win the game. Right now, this because the Terrapagus is asleep, it can't do any damage output, and this Amoongus isn't going to be able to get very much done with this Pollen Puff either. Even a critical hit isn't going to be enough yeah. onto either of these Pokemon. So it's going to leave the field, and she, you now, Jean Paul's last hope to get some damage down and try to even up this Pokemon score before this timer ends. Terrapagos will stay asleep, takes that mandatory first turn of sleep, and Amoongus goes straight for that Pollen Puff into the Incineroar, which just swapped in, keeping it nice and healthy for the remainder of this game. If you are Eric, you can try and play for what is a timer win at this point, or, or like a knockout win, like you normally knock out all four Pokemon, standard game of VGC. But at this point, if you are able to just stall out this game, even two minutes left we see there, once those two minutes ends, the game is just over. Well, it's going to be fake out into the Chiyu, but the Terrapagos is going to stay asleep. Uh, so yet another turn where Jean-Paul isn't going to be able to do any damage. And this poor Chiyu, for all of its troubles, has to take the Spore as well. We are really starting to run out of time here, folks, in the second game between Eric and Jean-Paul. And this Chiyu now has to take its mandatory turn of sleep. What's important, though, is can this Terrapagos do up. anything? It woke up, but it's taken so many parting shot drops it needs on the special hit. attack. So the critical hit has oh. to come through. This Incineroar does take quite a bit of damage, but not enough as the parting shot now gets a chance to rotate this Incineroar out. And unfortunately for Jean Paul, I do believe we saw Eric select Spore into the Trapico slot. It will just go straight back to sleep and take a mandatory turn of sleep. And now Urshifu can come in again faster than the Choice Scarf Chiyu on Jean Paul's side of the field. So even if Chiyu does possibly get a one turn wake up on this next turn, it won't matter because it can just get knocked out by a Surging Strikes or a close combat before it can move. Absolutely. Either one feels pretty safe unless there's going to be an Amoongus switch in. But as this timer starts to whittle down, you're going to see the final few moments of this game. Eric just playing it safe. You, of course, in this situation, if you're up that Pokemon, you use as much your time as possible Absolutely. to stall out this timer. Yeah, once this turn ends, I, it's going to be really hard for Jean-Paul, even if 
not impossible because you can take you can either take a KO with Urshifu here uh, or Jean-Paul switches in Amoongus for the Chiyu. But in that case, you just don't have the offense to try and get a knockout. And what Jean-Paul needs right now is a knockout to try and even the Pokemon score. Again, if, if the time ends with a 4-3 count in Eric's favor, Eric just wins. Yep. I mean, the Chiyu gets a chance to pivot out, so the Amoongus will take the Surging Strikes a little bit better. But the Urshifu was always going to be faster than this Chiyu, so never a chance to actually get an attack off before it would get knocked out to these Surging Strikes. And of so, course, Travagos can't wake up here either. No. Time has run out. This should be a win for Eric's favor here. Yep. Oh, very, very well played set between these two trainers, Eric having to run a marathon in order to oh, get yeah. the final win, but with the Pollen Puff onto the Urshifu is the final move of this game. This Urshifu is going to be back up to full, and Eric Rios taking this <laughs> gauntlet of a game, yeah. gauntlet of a series, 2-0. Just for those confused at home, you have to select your moves for the next turn, but before the turn plays out, the game does end. Thanks to that timer, the time runs out. Eric takes his second game win here against Jean-Paul Lopez Buiza and moves to 3-0 and in New Orleans, looking to capitalize on a very strong start to this international championship. Jean-Paul did not make that easy either. No, 